Hey guys, Ron here, and once again I brought together three other artists, gave them a prompt, and we all had to create some Pokemon that embody the description I gave them, which was relationships. Am I right? Their job was to create two separate Pokemon that have some sort of relationship, whether it be symbiotic, parasitic, friendship, rivalry, enemies, prey and predator, etc. They have to be able to work on their own but have a very clear connection in their lore. Now we're finally going to reveal our fake mon to you guys and each other. Let me introduce these amazing artists. Jack from Subjectively is back. The Twitter artist Virgolifus is here again, and new to the series is June, the artist and animator better known as Ray from the wonderful YouTube channel Ginger Ninja. O -W -O. Check the description for the links to these wonderful artists. Now let's finally see the results, but before that, consider leaving a like if you enjoy so I know to make part 4, and check out my Pokemon art playlist which has tons of videos like this one where I create new Pokemon. Subjectively, you go first. Right. What's up? Oh, cool. So, <laughs> alright, this was uh, a bit of a challenge for me starting off, and I, I made it even harder for myself because uh, right at the beginning when you, when you gave us this challenge, I was also starting a different challenge i was doing a, a daily drawing challenge where i was doing a drawing every day so i was mm. like okay i want to bang this out fairly quickly but i don't want to rush it um so i got stuck on the relationship thing and i kind of went with the first idea that came into my head which was just predator and prey and i was like oh. that's kind of yeah right you know, <laughs> yeah, that's that mazo <laughs> region right like but i was like that's kind of boring and i've already sort of done that so how can i make that a little bit more interesting so I thought about uh, more complex predator-prey relationships, and I started thinking about defensive mimicry, which is basically... <sighs> yeah. Oh no! Oh no! no I was oh, originally no. going to do that, but oh, okay. good thing that I didn't. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I, I went into defensive mimicry, which is basically like when uh, an animal tries to look like another animal um, or something else to scare away predators. And originally the, the prompt was going to be mimicry. I think so. Because that was the relationship that I, I originally thought was the most interesting so this actually so this is the one that that obviously caterpie is based off of it looks pretty much exactly like caterpie but then there's another one that even looks more like a snake head and i was like okay something like that would be really cool but i obviously don't want to do just caterpie again so for the first one i was doing the prey item and to come up with my original idea i used uh uh, what is it called? Uh, Kone Pokemon? Uh, the, like, AI... Oh, I think you've used it before, yeah. Ron. Oh! Uh, Nokemon? Uh, Nokemon. Nokemon, yeah. yes. And I eventually found one that I really liked, uh, which was <laughs> this. And absolutely insane. But I liked it because when I was looking at it, the first thing I saw was the head of some sort of, like, dragon creature. Hmm. Um, but then the longer I looked at it, I was like, okay, well, where's the body? Like, is that its mouth or are those arms? For my first design, I wanted to create a bug type that used defensive mimicry to protect itself against predators. This is a very common theme in nature, but it's only alluded to in a handful of Pokemon designs. I ended up with a really cute design that looked like the head of a small dragon, and I rearranged the shapes to make the components of the head out of parts of an insect's anatomy. After I was finished, I had a solid starting point for my second Pokemon design. My first design is kind of weird looking, um, because I based it off of this uh, AI-generated 3D model, and it's called Bait Insect. <laughs> what am I um, looking at? <laughs> it's I see very. It. I, 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 okay, I found the face. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was like the the entire part, like the entire point of the design is like, where, what is the real head? Like, what am I looking at here? And this isn't the final design that I went with, but this was like the rough sketch stage. And it, it kind of explains Ooh. a little bit more how it would move around and it, like how it would look in different uh, it, settings. Um, so it's got like its little legs that fold up underneath its body while it's flying with its tiny little wings. Oh. And it's got these like claw arms that look like the jaw of some, well, another Pokemon that you'll see in a second. Uh, and then it's got these big false eyes and then real eyes beneath them that kind of look like nostrils. Mm -hmm. um, this is totally like a Gen 8 Mon. You know how like Gen 8 has a lot yeah. of Mons where like th there are hidden things that come out or like when they attack, you know, different parts of their mm -hmm. body come out. I, this is what mm -hmm. I love about the new generation of Pokemon. So mm -hmm. I'm glad you did something like that. I like his legs. I thought they were abs and turns out it's a jaw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's also legs. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, thank you. For some reason, I looked at the legs and I was reminded, um, I was reminisced of either 
a horseshoe crab or an isopod, some sort yeah. of、mm-hmm. creature, the、mm-hmm. insect that kind of tucks its, its legs in a certain way. I'm getting,、yeah. I'm getting like mantis shrimp almost a little bit. At you know, at a distance, you're like, oh wait, that's kind of cute. And then you're like, oh wait, that's kind of weird. Like, what are those little legs underneath it? So like the <laughs> creepy and cute like middle ground is what I was going for. What's cool about mimicry in general is now that I'm now I'm anticipating the other animal, and I'm very hyped for、mm-hmm. that too. I went back and forth for the typing and. You, like you said, Virgo is like oh, kind of bug dragon, right? And、mm-hmm. I almost wanted to do bug dragon, but、yeah. I did do bug dragon already in the Maza region for kind、mm-hmm. of a similar idea.、Mm-hmm. So instead, I went for the other very vague type and one that I don't think there's a type combination of it already,、mm-hmm. um, because I was thinking about like Kecleon and、uh, just some weird Pokemon like Girafferig that for some reason are just normal types,、uh, just because they're too weird to be classified as anything else.、True. So I was like. Bug normal, you know anything but normal.、Uh, but it is a normal. Oh,、type. I actually did something like that. We'll get to that、uh, later. But、okay. I know exactly what you're.、Um, I know exactly what you were thinking when you chose、yeah. for the normal type.、Yeah. Oh my god, he's so small. Yeah, itty <laughs> bitty. <laughs> Pretty small. Small little guy. So to protect themselves from their main predators, bait insects have developed a form of defensive mimicry so that they appear to be the head of the same Pokemon that hunts them.、Ooh. Because this disguise is so convincing, bait insect will sometimes unintentionally befriend their predators. <laughs> so it's actually <laughs> such a convincing disguise, and the other Pokemon thinks it looks as enough like them that they will actually sometimes think they're talking to another one of their own species, and they'll become friends when in the. In the They really wanted to eat them. <laughs>、uh, so、um, it yeah, took、I、all my、that. strength to not say this guy's pretty sus, <laughs> 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 but here I am. You might as well just say it. He is. He's he's kind of sus. He's a little sussy. A little、um, sussy baka. <laughs> Stop. I've really been trying to with my Pokemon designs go super unconventional with them because, like you said, like I love that thing. With Gen Nine, where they really take advantage of 3D models and the animations that they use, and、mm-hmm. how there are so many little hidden features that can be,、uh, you know, showcased in the animations. So the next Pokemon is going to be fully 3D modeled. You're saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, I have spent、uh, the entire now.、Um, so the next one、uh, actually took me far less time to design because I designed this one first, and I already kind of、oh, knew、yeah. exactly where to go from for this. The second Pokemon I designed would, of course, be the predator that Bait and Sex tries to mimic. Reptilian anatomy made up the rest of the body, while the head, of course, drew inspiration from Bait and Sex design. The final twist I added to Deceptile was the tail. Which in turn mimicked the shape of its prey, bait insect. My final product was an endless cycle of trickery where neither predator nor prey could ever be sure what's real and what's fake. So the next design,、uh, and you guys are gonna actually speaking of workshopping names, you guys might want to help me with this because I this bit of a sussy name,、uh, but <laughs> this is Deceptile. <laughs> That's and- hilarious. <laughs> and of course, you know it sounds too much like Septile. I know, but I just I came up with the name. And I was like, oh, Deceptile, that's so perfect.、Um, but I don't know. I might I might have to change that. I、uh, love his shapes. I fully、oh, expected、yeah. it to be、okay. like a menacing dragon or something that the thing would have、no. wanted to be、uh, <laughs> mimicking. Oh, I love lizards. I, I had a lot of fun designing this. I, I really love like、um, Salandit. Uh, and like the the really like spread out lizard lizard Pokemon,、yeah. um, but I wanted this one to feel more cute、uh, as the predator.、Uh, I just felt like that'd be a kind of a fun twist. And as someone who grew up with lizards as pets, like I always felt like the lizard who was the predator looked way cuter and way more friendly than the crickets that I fed it. That was、uh, <laughs> that was his food. So I was like, you know, the bugs are kind of gross and creepy,、uh, and the the lizard is is. Cute and kind of friendly looking, but he still wants to eat bait insect. See, you've hurt me by making it a predator and prey thing because now I'm just like all here for the wholesome friendship story of the ages. With or or oh, Deceptinole.、Uh, oh, like oh, like an anole. Okay,、mm-hmm. wait, that's pretty good too. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right, that's probably a better name.、Uh, so, bait insect has defensive mimicry, and then、uh, Deceptinole has.、Uh, Kind of a bait thing on、uh, its tail, and、mm. that I did also take from another type of animal that is literally just called the spider mimic viper, <laughs> and it、oh. has、uh, the scales on its tail、uh, oh, from、it. a distance. It's gross, right?、Oh. <laughs> um, actually, look like 
a spider from a distance and mm -hmm. um, it uses it to uh, trap birds. It, the bird will come down, try to eat the spider, and then it will eat uh, the bird. I came up with um, a name. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, let's hear it. Duplicitous. Instead of oh, Duplicitous. Oh, that's good. Duplicitous. Oh, that's good. Oh, I like that. That really rolls off the tongue. Okay, I, I think I'll go with the Duplicitous. I gotta change his, uh, <laughs> his Pokedex entry. Do it quickly. Its tail looks like a bait insect to try to lull it into a false sense of security. Bait insect comes over. It's like, oh, look, I see one of my friends. Then it sees one of its predators. Then its predator sees its prey. And it's like, hey, look, it's one of my friends. And it's just this like weird, uh, endless cycle of lies <laughs> and deceit that end up uh, in a nice, healthy friendship uh, that uh, no one gets eaten. Hmm. Um, so that was... Normal. Uh, okay. Yes, just normal type. Again, just going for that, you know... Like, that's a comment I get all the time. Like, that should have been a dragon type. And, like, yeah. I feel you. I, I get you. Like, you know, who doesn't love dragons? But, like, it's okay. It, it mm -hmm. can look like a dragon, but not explicitly be a dragon. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> um, and you've owned lizards, so you already yes. know about like how geckos, when they feel threatened or when they're trying to display, they will move their tails in a very mm -hmm. wavy tail uh, movement to them that is just so mesmerizing to see, mm -hmm. but they are trying to distract a predator. So it reminds me of that. June! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Step up! You got this! You got okay. this! So, uh, context for the audience, I am very new to the, the Pokemon stuff and I have not really done any descriptions or names or any copious amount on my own. So, the, the, the lovely people here have offered to help me come up with names, but I, I have guys. I do have some little dudes. Um, <laughs> That's what I want. Uh, when you gave us these prompts, I had just seen Multiverse of Madness. Okay, cool. It was immediately my favorite Marvel movie ever. I had a lot of fun with it. I went and okay, no I spoilers. watched- no spoilers. I haven't seen it yet. Oh boy. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little There's relevant, a but I'll, I'll avoid spoilers. I enjoyed it so much because I am really big into like body horror and, mm. and oh. gore and stuff. So I went home and I was watching all of the Evil Dead series and you <laughs> sent that message oh. and I was like, what kind of relationship could I do? And I'm looking like I'm I was watching the second movie at the same time. I'm like, could I do something like kinda kinda weird? Could I do something kinda body horror y? I was literally watching a movie about ghosts and the idea of possession hadn't like occurred to me for like an hour. Oh <laughs> so interesting. That's where I started. And I thought I possession on its own seems kind of loose. Uh I wanted to find a second concept to kind of reinforce it. So something of a creature taking another creature is sort of xenomorph-esque, I thought. Uh, and I was aware that there was some sort of fungus with ants, and I had to go look that up again. Uh, the Cordyceps mushroom. Wow. Oh, cool. Okay. And it was while I was gathering references, I realized that Parasect already yeah. exists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So oh, that's let, all right. me, let me get let me get this straight. The one with the cutest art style went for full blown. <laughs> <laughs> that was like part so of my curious. original idea. Was I was like, can I do something like one of them's like really messed up and the other one's like super cute just to get like the dichotomy of me in there? But <laughs> I love that. Oh I'm so God. curious now. I, I have no idea what this is gonna look like. Yeah, hopefully I don't okay. sense your design. <laughs> no, no, no. It ended up a lot tamer than it could have been. Um, okay, nice. I actually ended up, I designed three Pokemon, is what I did. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Pulling a moxie. <laughs> yeah, I cheated a little bit. Because uh, at first I was going to have, I guess I was always planning on cheating. So I made it that there's two different single stage Pokemon that are just completely on their own. And if you breed them together is when you get this third kind. Oh. What does that even mean? I wanted my first design to look overtly cute and friendly to properly juxtapose its appearance to the infected Pokemon later on. I emphasized the fluffy antenna to look almost like rabbit ears at first, but ended up using them more like eyelashes. And the fluff around its chest was also embellished and extended to the back of its wings to make it look soft and warm. Both of these details done specifically so I could contrast them later on. I wanted its body and its eyes to be made up of some kind of magical light to give it more of an ethereal look and play into the nighttime and spooky themes. I wanted it to look like it belonged to the night, but something that you would be relieved to see or have with you once it's too dark to properly see your surroundings and whatever could be lurking around them. So this Ooh, is just nice. a, a Lunamoth. 
pretty much just a Luna Moth. Uh, I was going with the idea that I, I designed the last one first, and I, everything else fell into place after that. Nice. Hmm. But since uh, what I learned about Cordyceps specifically with moths is that in China they are like farmed as herbal medicine, oh. and the moth larvae that they farm with Cordyceps are ghost moths. They're not they're, actually like undead moths, right? No, yeah, they're called ghost moths. Like the, oh, okay, the okay. colloquial <laughs> name is ghost moth. Uh, it's like there's a lot about medicine I don't know. <laughs> what what's a good transition into ghost nighttime? So Luna Moth. Uh, mm-hmm. That's uh. most of what went into this. I gave her a little uh, light as her thorax question mark. Abdomen and Abdomen, some of the. Probably. Oh, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and then like some of the light coming off of it, making up the the quote unquote second set of wings. Oh, that's the, the light. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. Cool. Very extremely stylized light. I like the asymmetry in that a lot. It's just not something you see enough in Pokemon designs, especially in Fakemon designs. Uh, it's just some cool stylized asymmetry, and I it, I like that a lot. I like to imagine if it was animated that like the two movie yeah. bits would be there, but like the rest would be like a little bit of particle effects. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the the mushroom buddy that I designed to go with it, I was trying to look up specifically since this was a Luna moth. I was like, okay, what are Mushrooms have something to do with night. Maybe something that blooms at night, something that grows best off of moonlight. I found bioluminescent mushrooms. Ah. Do you know what the the most popular bioluminescent mushroom is colloquial, colloquially? I love that word. <laughs> known <laughs> as. It's a ghost mushroom. Oh my God. <laughs> it's perfect. Okay. The second design kind of fell into place on its own. I used shapes more similar to oyster mushrooms than cordyceps so that I could achieve a friendlier shape. Since I didn't want the zombie ground zero kind of themes to be obvious just yet, I wanted it to be deceptive. This cute little thing that didn't obviously make sense why it was a ghost type with a blank expression from what you could see of its face. Like it's cute, but it's hard to read. You can't really tell what it's thinking or feeling because this Pokemon can't really read you either and it doesn't want to. It has no empathy for you or anyone else. <laughs> oh, oh that's nice. so cute! <laughs> that's oh, I love this one. So it definitely it looks a lot more like the ghost mushroom than cordyceps because cordyceps are really like long, stringy, and gross. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure what the, what on earth I would be able to do with that. Uh, mm-hmm. And by the way, this shiny, th- that's an amazing oh, shiny. That is a yes. great shiny. I was excited I about that. that. Had to show off the bioluminescence somehow. Mm-hmm. This is what they, the cordyceps looks like when it's farmed. So a mushroom in an overall. <laughs> so true. <laughs> it's not much, but it's a little. It's not mush. It's not mush. <laughs> oh my god. So I, I wanted to go off the appearance of a ghost mushroom because a long string doesn't super lend well shape-wise to silhouette. Mm. This is what a moth in the wild looks like with cordyceps. Ooh. Oh, that's not fun. Oh, that's crazy. Crazy. So I, I uh, adjusted my my third Pokemon design, and I went for both the look that I got from the Luna Moth wings and the the Ghost Mushroom, and found a way to sort of get the idea of Cordyceps across without showing it as obviously has a lot more inspiration from stuff I made up. The last one I actually started designing first. I figured if I sorted out how the infected Pokemon looked, it would be easier to split it into two and design the two uninfected ones. But I was struggling to make the spiky look work, so after I designed the first two Pokemon, I let them sort of guide how this base I had would end up. Instead of the spiky cordyceps shape, I borrowed from oyster mushrooms again, trying to make it look like the fungus had burst from the neck and eyes of its victim and taken the place of their body. I wanted Iluna's wings to be connected by that cute fluffy mass, so when the mushrooms took over around the bug's throat, it would be like these two things sharing a body even had to share the same breathing together. It's no longer either of the creatures it used to be, but a revenant. There's a third one. Oh, that definitely looks like a child of both of those. Yeah. Oh, I love the way you layered the like fungus wings because that that's that reads so immediately as some sort of gross yes rotting (laughs) fungus yeah it looks like like, the mushrooms you see on like bark and stuff the mushroom has the eyelashes too that's also smart yeah (laughs) the body horror coming in and now like it's just all this stuff is overtaking your body you know but like outwardly like it's it's relatively cute i would think yeah yeah it is i love the way you paint i love Uh, all the little color you get in there are there 
any Pokemon other than like baby Pokemon that require specific breeding conditions. I was thinking born? about that too. Like, is this technically a baby? <laughs> yeah. I don't know any Pokemon that needs to be bred by two specific Pokemon in no, order to I don't exist. Think so. Is Fion Fione a baby Pokemon? Yeah, but it is. It's not like you yeah. need two Pokemon for anything. Sogaleo Lunala? Oh yeah, okay, yeah. I'm surprised someone hasn't said this yet, but it's really got Hollow Knight vibes. <laughs> oh, oh, it yeah. kind of does. Big time. Yeah. So I guess it's my turn. All right, let's see it. Yeah, well, let's see what you got. The relationship is literally just a rivalry. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, but everything else is, like, they're both, like, opposites in a lot of different ways, and that's what's really cool in every in every way possible. So they're basically mm -hmm. a ninja versus a samurai. <laughs> oh, very cool. Um, very cool. But not only ninja versus samurai, but... Autumn versus winter. <laughs> Ooh. And also chaotic versus lawful. Okay. So a chaotic okay. autumn ninja versus a lawful winter samurai. Wow. That is such a cool starting point. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, it took a long time to decide what kind of like animal or like design trait each thing should have. I wanted them to like one to be way more brutal than the other. Like like the winter one is way more brutal than the autumn, which is more like uh, fun. W what animals are associated with ninjas? There are a lot, but I had to also make sure that the animal also works with the other animal. So like mm -hmm. I thought of, let's say frog, but we already have a ninja frog. I thought of a lot of things, uh, but in the end, I, it's basically a vague animal. Mm -hmm. The closest animal it is, is a squirrel though. I'd say like a flying squirrel ninja. That's what this okay. is. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I can already see it. So I want to make a ninja that is hidden in the autumn leaves. It's going to be a flying squirrel and its gliding membrane will be in the shape of a leaf with its tail as a stem. It was incredibly tough coming up with an athletic pose without making it look too humanoid. In the end, I was able to combine its head shape with its hood made of dense leaves. It has patterns reminiscent of the mesh chainmail ninjas wear in various media and its colors are vibrant and autumnal. Its eyes will be blue like its winter samurai adversary. Here is Shinobri's. Oh! Oh yes! Oh my God! Oh, I love that! Oh, that's fantastic! So basically, yeah, leaf flying squirrel, the mercenary Pokemon Shinobris. So this Pokemon is carefree and uses its abilities uh, for others, whether it be for like for good or bad. It doesn't really care sometimes, but it always defaults to being good. Like it plays tricks and and, and doesn't have like <laughs> and doesn't like authority. Uh, whether it be like the strongest Pokemon or the, the literal like humans, like police or something. And uh. they blend into the autumn leaves and are able to like glide silently and they shoot uh, sharp leaves midair. Uh, it, it uses a basically a grass type version of water shuriken that Greninja has called Leaf Kunai. Um, oh, cool. And yeah, basically chaotic good, chaotic neutral. I love the colors. Yeah, it was such a good idea to take the idea of those. Uh, like kite things that uh, the the ninjas would use, mm -hmm. and then mix that with the silhouette of a falling leaf, mm -hmm. because it 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 actually seems like an idea that could have come from Japanese mythology. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, instead we get the tanukis gliding on um, some other uh, part of the yeah. Originally, but... the tanuki was actually what I was gonna do. Now I think of it, but then um... I couldn't think of a way to make it not. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, can't reference that uh, part of the, the lore. But anyway, yeah, it's cowards, like... Cowards, cowards. Oh, and I'm really excited now to see. This is the best part about this challenge is as soon as you show... As anyone's shown the first one now, it's like, okay, but what's the next one going to yeah. be? Like, I'm so excited about I love how the tail is just the stem of the leaf. I don't know. This is mm -hmm. it's a really good grass uh, fighting type. Mm -hmm. and, and the type is actually... Will make a lot of sense with the other one. They both... Are have an advantage against the other basically mm -hmm. that's what i that, that was okay. the hardest part to come up with i really needed types that you know that complemented each other and last thing though what's interesting is the name actually <laughs> that it comes from shinobi and breeze right that's simple but mm -hmm. it easily works in japanese too so like it, in japanese it could be like pronounced uh shinoburisu which mm -hmm. literally means endurance squirrel <laughs> 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 that's fantastic wow you really thought this one through it was a coincidence dude it's crazy. Oh. <laughs> wow, that's even better. Like that the rest of it happened to, you know, be part of it. Just like Patrizio. Uh, it's, it's a real Pokemon. Uh, already. Is the shiny supposed to be summer? Yeah. Yes! Oh, great. Oh, great. Been sitting on that question this whole time. <laughs> and that right. means that the no winter No more edging. One. Come on. Get, 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 get. <laughs> Do it already.
So I chose a reindeer as the winter Pokemon since their antlers already look similar to the stylized Kabuto helmets samurai wear, or wore. Its face was tough to make since it had to look natural on a very humanoid body. It'll have samurai armor and antlers made of ice, but it was hard thinking of a pose that didn't make it look humanoid or gave it such a unnatural silhouette, at least until the end, where I decided to make it look authoritative and stoic. Coming up with hands for a bipedal uh, deer was the worst part. In the end, I'm satisfied with these hoof fingers, and the sky is just white and blue to camouflage into the snow with red eyes that match the color of its ninja enemy. Now the winter one will be easier to understand. It's shining. Here is Shinobreeze's adversary, Bushika. Oh. It's pink! Yes! Oh. Yes! Oh. oh my god! This oh guy's big! God. Yeah, he's I big. I love that shiny. <laughs> oh, cool. Large lad. <laughs> very cool. I had to make him, like, very handsome, and, like, it was... Th this... I, I spent like <laughs> double the amount of time on his design than uh, Shinobri's because this a standing deer is the craziest thing in Pokemon. You can't; it's impossible. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but basically, <laughs> Bushika is like uh, will mercilessly defend those who uh, uh, those who command it. Basically, so it's like okay. just neutral authority figure basically it can create mm -hmm. uh ice school spears from moisture in the air and it's a constant it's a con there's a constant struggle between shinobris who tries to like undermine its authority and strength like like it'll make <laughs> it'll, it'll 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 almost be like a comedy where like shinobris will come in and like make bushika look like a loser but bushika is actually like very strong and mm -hmm. is able to actually like defend its uh master against shinobris um it's usually like a noble fighter but it becomes like reckless in, f in the face of shinobris uh, and neither can get the upper hand on each other. But they, here's a cool, they, they will put their differences aside when helping the greater good. So, okay. Oh, yeah. For oh. the end of the anime arc, exactly. they have to face off against the big bad. Uh, I guess. <laughs> it's a very loop of the third thing going on. I was, uh, that was done, yeah. It was exactly that, honestly. Oh, and, he, and I love, I love like, the frown on uh, Bushika because it reminds me of uh, typical paintings or uh, maybe not even that, but like the armor. I don't know. It's just a very... Yeah. Like, like stern frown. And originally, I tried to like implement like a helmet and way more like Japanese armor. It was, it, it just looked, too, it was too clunky, and it just, uh, it didn't work. It, it broke the silhouette of a deer, basically. I mm -hmm. wanted to keep it way more deer, so it's like vaguely Japanese, mm -hmm. but it's I like I like when it's vague, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be literally just like samurai armor. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I like that a lot. I love that. Uh -huh. I just love the, the the dichotomy of these two designs. I I, I was a little worried right off the bat, I was like, okay, how many of us are just going to do, like, natural, like, you know, real-life animal relationships? Yeah. But I like how many of them are personality-based relationships uh, mm. and how that you know, because my favorite part about designing Pokemon is not like taking an animal and turning it into a cartoon character. I like taking inspiration from real life and making characters. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, like a lot of people forget that that's like one of the most charming things about Pokemon. Some people don't even realize that's what they love about their favorite Pokemon is they're not just elemental animals. They're characters with unique personality traits. They're kind of universal and play off of each other. And this is done very well uh, with these two Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And I was I was like googling for days, maybe even weeks, trying just to find like natural like enemies in actual the real world, and then I ended up just making my own enemies. that don't actually I don't think squirrels, uh, are squirrels enemies with squirrels deers. and deer. I think squirrels have kind of like wanted to play with deer a couple of times. There's footage of it. Cool. <laughs> and both can't, like there are like Japanese flying squirrels and deers, you know, in the north of Japan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was that was definitely the actual inspiration in terms of their relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Are we uh, someone else joining us? Sorry. <laughs> I have a, my my booth is in my closet and then I have to leave the closet to see my office to see the computer. So I was trying to like just peek out at the room without leaving the closet and then I fell. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Does it not get hot in there? Oh, it gets extremely hot in here. <laughs> extremely so and I'm heat sensitive. It's hell. Oh no. All right, well, we'll keep it moving then. <laughs> yeah, okay. So Virgo, do it in under a minute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I know you told me no dragons, so I didn't do any dragons. Yes, please. So anyways, I did dinosaurs. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Can't be stopped. 
Um, so the f I did something that none of you are going to guess right off the bat. Ooh, so okay. these two um, prehistoric Mesozoic creatures do not exist in the same time period, sadly. <gasps> and so instead of um, Acrocanthosaurus, I just went with the more popular and more well-known Carnotaurus. Carnotaurus. Mm -hmm. um, they have arms which are far more vestigial, I think, or just far more quote-unquote useless compared to oh yes yes that's like, that's <laughs> yeah, that's right. the, um, the carnotaurus so it's kind of in the mainstream right now but i did not incorporate mm -hmm. i actually made sure not to incorporate this because we still don't know if they're if they had that much range of motion even though prehistoric mm -hmm. planet is very accurate we don't know mm -hmm. if their muscles which they did have a lot of muscles in those areas would allow for that kind of motion to start off i just took the animal and drew it as if it was in a pokemon art style no bells and whistles nothing no additions and it was perfect as it was I did not need to add anything besides a couple of spikes onto the legs, which kind of give it a cactus-y appearance, despite it not being a grass type at all. It fit, though, with the sort of spiky exterior, and that subverts the plushy type of body it has. The, the jaw needed to be just a bit bigger, but I feel like it differentiates itself a little bit more different than um, Tyrantrum, which is I was just fine with. I think this was perfectly designed immediately as I wanted it to be, so I did not do any or any more additions to it whatsoever. It was just refining it until I was finished. This is also a very basic Pokemon, but it's it's part of its charm. Predatoros, as in Predatoros. Oh, oh. Huh? <gasps> oh that is so cute. Yeah. As you can see. But <laughs> the species was named due to the fact that their skulls resembled Tauros, the Pokemon Tauros. Oh, much that's like cool. how Carnotaurus mm -hmm. is named after like bulls in, you know, our world. I just want to see more of that in Pokemon where it's it feels like Pokemon were, you know, actually discovered by scientists and they were given names you know, just like that. Okay, side note, side note to everyone in the comments. <laughs> it's a dinosaur Pokemon, why isn't it a rock type? Shut <laughs> your pie hole. <laughs> I can make my dinosaur Pokemon any type I want. That's not a rock type. <laughs> oh, yes, preach. <laughs> Anyways. Preach. It's a normal ground type because um, you can tell that this is a very, it's a very normal dinosaur. I mean, as normal mm -hmm. as dinosaurs can get. <laughs> okay. Um, but you know it's gonna it's gonna have you know stab boost uh no headbutt it's it's just normal types are underrated they they mm -hmm. have their so place true. as pokemon and um you can tell that this is kind of a basic design it kind of looks like a cacti even though it's Definitely. not a mm -hmm. not a desert dwelling um dinosaur and you'll you'll get to see you'll get to see why but you literally put a desert in the background <laughs> And I think it's a beach. beach. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, I was thinking oh, yeah, the same the thing ocean. and then I saw the coast. It's kind of a co mm. it, it is in the sand, but it's not the kind of sand that you Ooh, think. Oh, okay. These um, teasers right now. So it's kind of looks like a cacti, mostly because you think that this is a dinosaur, like, oh, it's big and scary, but it's all round and plushy <laughs> because <laughs> Pokemon, by the end of the day, they are meant to be appealing to children. The key the signifiers is the teeth are you know they, they has pretty big jaw and tiny little arms now mm -hmm. what do you think does what do you think it, it has as a symbiosis uh partner what would you think <gasps> it needs someone to brush its teeth <laughs> yes and you got it immediately wait what wait, did, wait, I what? Did, I did i get it <laughs> I don't know where to start with this one because pterosaurs are notoriously the weirdest animals to have ever existed. I tried to draw one in the style of Pokemon and I had to do a bunch of additions to make sure that I could convey just exactly what I wanted with this creature. So there was different poses, there was lots of um, shape experimentation and I ended up with something that felt like what I wanted and also conveyed the idea of um, uh, a flamingo, which is a, mo a more modern animal where people are more familiar with, which kind of makes this Pokemon stand out on its own. Um, beyond that, it was kind of tricky to finally get all the elements to work coherently together, and there were some mo more elements that I changed with the final art, but overall, I am happy with how uh, poofy and cute this design turned out. 
<laughs> this yes. is Pirate Toofy, the toothpaste oh my. toothbrush Pokemon. Oh my, oh my god. god! Oh my god! That's incredible. This one wins. This what? one is based on an actual pterosaur, which is one of my favorite pterosaurs for for how weird it is. It is Pterodostro. Oh no. Um, Pterodostro has a beak Ew. with something like baleen or like, like it's a filter feeder. And here it's is a whale um, bird. Yeah, it, this is a it's also whale pink bird. because we think that um, it's a shrimp. Yeah, they would. They, that's why it has an elongated neck and some ah. basic body structures that make it look more like a flamingo Pokemon, too. So it can stand on its own. But as you can clearly see, Terra Tufi is like Terra uh, in the in the duck century. Predatoros keep their flock safe from danger because oh. they rely on Terra Tufi, like being th these wonderful little like. Not only do they like skim off like for shrimp, but they also they, they have this ability called squeaky clean, where their floppy <laughs> bubble coat it can get rid of trap hazards in the battlefield oh. and it also oh. it's also freshens up you know the the mouth <laughs> of um, predatoros so it exactly. really does say that brush his teeth yeah kind of like how there's these birds that um would you know clean the teeth out of a uh, an alligator mouth oh. mm -hmm. yeah true cattle finch like a plover too this really does win this is such <laughs> oh, a it's cute so fun. idea this is such a cute idea and I love, I mean, I, I feel like we, we, we're definitely on the same page, Virgo, you and I, about dinosaur and dragon designs. Uh, <laughs> every time we do one of these, it just proves that uh, tenfold. Oh, thank you so much. I feel much. like I should thank you. Like, thank you for making this. This is, fan <laughs> this is fantastic. I absolutely love it. Jack I really today. wanted to do a, ter uh, a pterosaur. I just didn't know what I was going to go for. And I almost did not do the, um, the toothbrush uh, idea because I was thinking, oh, no, that's way too stupid. But... <laughs> I think it was just the perfect amount of cartoony and just yes. this kid-friendly idea that fits best in Pokemon, which also incorporates some of my favorite Mesozoic creatures and a pterosaur that not a lot of people know of. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what's cool about Fakemon and let's say the series, which is that y you can share your non-Pokemon interests and put them into mm -hmm. the Fakemon. Uh, and I think we've definitely exemplified that here today. <laughs> For sure. Um, I, I was thinking that too, like our, our niche interests always kind of come out, or I guess not niche interests, but our other interests outside of Pokemon, like Moxie kept bringing in like Dark Souls. And it's just like <laughs> inevitable that you're going to bring in, because that's what's beautiful about designing Fakemon is that you can just take pretty much whatever you find interesting, whether it's a dinosaur or a teapot, and then you can just be like, let's make this my best friend and go on adventures and have giant magical battles together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just, it's great. It's a wonderful thing. It is, it is. Well, thank you guys for coming on. I This was, an, this was a fantastic group. I had a lot of fun. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. Yeah. It's my yeah. pleasure. Again, check the description for all the, the, the these lovely people's channels and social medias and whatevers. Can't recommend them enough. Bye. <laughs> bye, 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 guys. Bye-bye.